Team Blast, what's up? It's Coach TJ Dixon here. I'm the assistant coach and hitting coach. I also do outfield at Sanford University. Today is chapter one, hopefully into a, a series that we're gonna be following up with you guys monthly, just getting you guys more connected with hitting coaches, players all around the country like myself, and how you can get the most out of your blast motion. So we're just gonna go over a couple of stories and how I use Blast and then shoot me your questions down at the bottom. I'll try to get those answered in the time span, okay? For everybody joining on, my background is baseball, obviously. I came up uh, out of a small school, a 4A school from Mobile, Alabama. UMS Wright Preparatory School. I was first team All-American in baseball and football there. I have the school record there for hits, stolen bases, um, and games played. Won three state championships there. Graduated in 2013 out of high school. I only had about five or six offers for baseball, and I had about 10 offers for football, including uh, one at the Naval Academy uh, that I turned down because uh, football is scary. But anyway, so I, I go on after that, and I go to Stanford University where I start as a freshman every single game for four years. Broke the record for games played there and hit over 300 for my four-year career. Not many home runs. The year I got drafted, I uh, had one home run. The Minnesota Twins took me in the 24th round that year. I hit about 370 for half the year and then hit a big slump towards the end. Ended about 340-ish. Got to pro ball after that. Went on and I played about two and a half seasons with the Minnesota Twins. Won a championship in the single A division in Elizabeth and Tennessee. And so that brings me to today. So that was my first encounter using Blast when I was in Elizabeth and Tennessee. And I remember going in the first day and making that transition from hitting with metal to a wooden bat is a huge difference because the wooden bat the sweet spot smaller and going from college pitching to pro pitching is a big jump so compared to softball there's a big jump from the high school level to the division one level there's some great pitching out there at the d2 d3 and junior college levels tying all this thing back together with my career and how i can help you guys today uh, with chapter one of our blast series we're talking about how we can get better using our blast and all things hitting today. If you're looking to make that jump from high school to college, Blast is awesome because you can compare what you're doing with other players. So our players at the Division One level, just talking about bat speed, on the Blast app, just the bat speed measurement itself, you can look at that number and compare and see where you're at, right? So most high school uh, softball players that I see, uh, their bat speed ranges from that 50 to 60 range. 60 being on the average end, but the upper average end of it. And then anything above 60, you have elite hand speed, uh, elite bat speed. My personal bat speed on the blast is right now, I'm pretty washed up. So I'm mid 50s to high 60s right now. But when I played back in my professional days, I was a high 60s, low 70s guy. And so just to kind of, I want to tell you guys a quick story about uh, how Blast has completely just changed the game and some of my lessons and guys I've worked with, girls I've worked with, and how just seeing that number sometimes can really change the game for you and help you unlock something with your swing that you never had before. So most of the time hitting, we're doing stuff off of feel. And so if we're just going blindly off of feel, we're just watching where the ball's going, if we're hitting on the field, but we don't always have that access. So long story short, I'm hitting with a guy who played uh, three years at the University of Alabama. Uh, he's now playing professional baseball with the uh, Washington Nationals. He was a second round draft pick this past year and he came to hit with me uh, before the draft. And, uh, and you can probably guess who I'm talking about if you're an Alabama fan. But he comes in and we put the blast on there and he's hitting 63, 64, 65 off the tee. And he's hitting lasers. I mean, this guy hit 340 in the SEC. And he knew he was going to get drafted, but he, he never really hit for power. He was always a, a big-time contact guy. And uh, he comes in, he's 64, 65. And I said, hey, man, I want you to try something. And we raise his hands a little bit. 
We tipped the barrel a little bit, so he was a guy who was kind of just here with his hand. In the first swing after he made that adjustment, it was 75 miles an hour. We wouldn't have ever known that if it weren't for blast. We were just trying stuff. You know, this is a high level hitter who just, his bat speed increased six, seven, eight miles an hour with one adjustment, right? And so that's the power of being able to measure those metrics while you're training. So sometimes while you're using your blast, you know, there's a lot of metrics on there, but I use the, the bat speed obviously, and then the attack angle. So tying everything kind of back together to where you can get better and, and where my experience will help you is if you pay attention to attack angle on the blast sensor, it's really, really important because we want to, we want that number to be in between six and 12 consistently. Think about if you hit it and, it, and you get a six, just imagine that's a line drive right to the shortstop or second baseman, right? That's a head high line drive, right? So when we say attack angle, a lot of guys and girls like really get really shy. We don't want to look at all the numbers because sometimes they can be overwhelming. Just think about attack angle is, is this first move that your bat makes as it enters the zone, right? So it's the attack angle. So it's basically the angle your barrel is taken to the ball. Some guys call it swing pass, right? So if you're hitting off the tee, and let's say your attack angle is above that six to 12 range, you're probably missing a lot of balls under, right? So a great drill to kind of get that number back down is think top hand. So I'll use a top hand drill, but anytime I do a top hand drill and I'm working on attack angle, I'm looking back and I'm seeing where my bat's entering in the zone. Because if I'm entering the zone here and I'm on plane, now when I go to that ball, I'm staying on top of it, right? This is key when you're going against a good rise ball pitcher, guys. If, especially at our level, if she has a good rise ball, you almost have to swing one ball above it, right? Sometimes it's not just enough to think eyes down. You still chase that ball, and we chase it because we're swinging in the wrong spot. We got to be able to uh, swing on top of the ball at times, right? And so that's another way you can use blast is, especially, let's say for us, we're going into to face Auburn or Ole Miss or whoever, and they have a really good rise ball pitcher, well, we'll use the blast and we'll say, hey, we want our attack angle this week off the tee to be between about six and eight. No more than 10 or 12, because if we're at 12, if we're right at that limit, we're going to be under her rise ball. So it's important to say, hey, I'm not trying to be perfect, right? But I need most of my swings, 80, 85% of my swings to be in that 6 to 10, 6 to 12 range. So now you're goal setting, right? So sometimes it's really easy to get caught up and get into the cage and want to just go in there and feel good. But the blast will challenge you. They have challenges on there. But just seeing that number alone, that should motivate you to say, hey, I need to uh, hit a higher goal. So we love it. And the last story I wanted to tell you before I start answering questions, if you guys got questions, drop them down below. So I'm hitting with one of my players. I'll say her name because I don't think she's watching. So I'm hitting with one of my players, our right fielder, Kedzie. She's a right-handed thrower, left-handed hitter. She grew up actually swinging right-handed. And then a coach along the way, middle school, high school, changed her, right? We all can attest to that, right? A coach changing us and getting us doing something completely different. But anyway, she ends up switching to the left side and starts slapping. So we're talking about a player who is not a slapper size. You know, she's taller. She's almost six feet tall, and she's power slapping. You think it makes no sense. Well, she goes off into her, her travel ball stand. She hits 450 slapping from the left side. Makes no sense. Long story short, she comes in about two weeks ago. She's trying to like work on hitting, not just slapping. So we get in there and she's about low to mid fifties on the bat speed, attack angles, you know, in that eight to 10 range, still missing under the ball a lot though. You know, rise ball struggled big. It's fouling everything to the left side if she's late. 
So I said, hey, kids, we put the blast on there. And I used one of my old school short bats and threw the blast on there. And we're working one on one. And I said, hey, let's go high T here. And so we raised the T. We raised it up as high as it can go. And I said, hey, I want you to hit every ball no higher than the L screen. And so we're talking about, we're talking about a ball this high on her, right? Almost up to the top of the zone. And I'm telling her to not hit it above the L screen. In your mind, you're thinking is that's virtually impossible, especially with the short bat. So she takes the first couple hacks and she's under it. She's under it. She's under it. Right. And I said, Hey, let's do this. Let's do this. We got the short bat here. Let's completely take your feet out of it. Don't turn. Don't rotate. Don't do anything. Let's focus on bat speed. So we do the same drill that we did with Andrew Pinckney, the Nationals guy. We raise the hands, we tip the barrel. So she kind of goes from being here to somewhere around here. And we're just feeling that. The first swing she takes, like I said, she was about 54, 55 on the bat speed, 67, 68, 69. She's tearing the cover off the ball just with that one adjustment. And it's just crazy that one thing, I'm trying to get her to keep the ball off the top of the net, hit the ball low into the screen. And I'm telling her over and over and over. And that's the only thing she's focused on, but her swing physically would not let her do it until she made that hand adjustment. So it's just so key when you're using the blast to change your hand position and mix things up and test out different things different stances to see if it works that's what's so great about seeing that number instantly right after you take the swing and the last thing i'll say and i'll get you guys off of here and uh, answer some questions but exit velo and bat speed are two different things your exit velo that's how hard the, the ball's coming off the bat so strength plays a big factor into that right so that number's gonna change. That number matters, but not really, right? Bat speed is what matters most, and that's what Blast measures because when we're talking bat speed, we're taking strength out of it. We're talking about how fast your body's going and how that whip is working with the, with the barrel. That's it. Are you throwing the barrel or are you throwing your hands, right? And so that's why it's so important to make sure you're using the Blast sensor, guys. So just the last thing I'll, I'll close then, when we're using uh, and when we're hitting, when we're training, when we're doing anything hitting wise, understand that it's all about adjustments. And to make adjustments, it's going to take some kind of mental capacity. It's going to take thinking. Thinking is involved in your training. There's no way around it. But when you have something there to tell you, hey, this is when you're hit, you're swinging fast and this is when you're not. Well, now we can limit that to one thing. Now, if we can think about high hands or, or get to a good stretch or, or get to my spot, think about one thing to work on while you're training. Now, when you get into the game, you're going to react a lot quicker. But if you're training and, and you're thinking about three, four, five different things, now when you get into the game, you're just going to go men in black when they wipe the memory out, right? You're just going to completely forget about everything. So it's just super important to get uncomfortable in your training, right? Do different things, but keep that one focus. I like to tell my hitters, last breath, last thought, right? So we'll take a breath, whew, let it travel. Deep breath, whew, stay on top. Deep breath, whew, slow feet, fast hands. Just one thing to focus on and then go to work because now when you get into the game, you're not going to be overthinking as much, okay? But that's all I got, guys. Appreciate you tuning in to episode one, okay? We're going to do this again where you might see me swing a little bit more and uh, may let you get a chance to look at some of our hitters as well uh, as we get ready for the spring season. Thanks for tuning in, guys.